Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna talk about five gadgets under $30 that truly have made a difference here in my studio. Let's get it. I'm a huge believer in eliminating obstacles and creating an atmosphere full of functionality and allowing you to basically be creative without anything else getting in the way and stopping you from being creative. So anytime I can incorporate something that allows me to do that, that can eliminate a problem for me, I'm excited about it. So today I want to show you some little gadgets that are relatively inexpensive that have helped eliminate some of those minor distractions for me personally. Hopefully these things will work for you as well, whether you're a producer, a guitarist, a home, you know, an engineer, a home studio guy, a musician of any kind or even just a content creator i think that some of these little things can help just make your life a little bit easier or maybe spark something get the get the wheels turning a little bit in your head to figure out how some of these gadgets can help you and your workflow so without further ado let's finally get to this list in no particular order but we're going to go one through five starting at number one and that is these weird sticky rubber thingies. They're actually called sticky pads and I believe the intention for these were to place it on a dashboard of a vehicle, place your cell phone on top of it to stop it from slipping. And because they're sticky, they not only stick to the cell phone, but will stick to the dashboard and inevitably cause friction and stop things from moving. Why did I need these? Well, if you watch my pedal demos, you know that I like having like an overview shot of my pedals. I kind of wanted to emulate what it would look like when I'm looking at a pedal and when I'm taking I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, all of the settings that I'm changing. And because I use the top of my desk to film those videos, it doesn't matter if the pedal has uh, Velcro on it or not, it still slips, right? Unless the pedal itself has rubber feet, which I oftentimes don't install if I don't need to, um, the pedal will just slip all over the place. So I remembered that these things existed. I went searching for them online and found them. I found a five piece pack for $6 on Amazon. I, Bought them, got them in here, slapped it on my table and immediately put a pedal on it and it saved the day. Exactly what I needed, it did. It just gave me just enough friction to stop the pedal from moving so that it wouldn't ruin those shots. Since it's made for a cell phone, it's practically the perfect size for your average guitar pedal. I also find that if the pedal's bigger or if I'm doing multiple pedals, I have of course five pieces of them, but I can also turn it to its side. And even if it just grabs a pedal just a little bit, it's enough grip to stop the pedal from moving. So it's been really, really vital. The only con to this product is that it gets dirty pretty fast. It is sticky, so it grabs onto dust. Anything that may have been on your desk, it will absorb it and essentially almost be useless. The good thing though, is that they're washable. So all you need is some soap and water, hang it to dry, and then it'll be good as new. So I highly, highly recommend this. You can't go wrong for $6. Coming in at number two are these rubber feet slash isolation bumpers. I installed the studio desk a couple of weeks ago and it's been working out great for me. Uh, but when I put my studio monitors on there, the material of the monitors and the top of the desk, I don't know, it's just, they counteracted each other and it was very slippery. It wasn't staying on. So I started looking at ways I could get it to grip a little bit better. And you know, you go down the rabbit hole and inevitably I thought, let me just buy little rubber feet to put under the studio monitors. That will save me money and it'll be great. But when I looked those up, I ended up finding these isolation pads. They range in thickness. I saw them as little as one inch to as large as three inches. The size that I went with was an inch and a quarter, and it came with eight bumpers, effectively being able to supply bumpers for two monitors or a pair of studio monitors. And it was about $17. So a little expensive for rubber feet, but they do two things. Number one, of course, they provided the, the friction that I needed to keep the studio monitors in place. Number two, it gives me isolation between the speaker and the desk itself. As we all know, a pair of studio monitors actually touching a wood tabletop can cause rumbling, uh, unrealistic frequencies, and you wanna avoid that as much as possible. So it gives me just enough separation from the desk itself and it allows it to stop moving. While on the topic of the studio desk, it's been working out great for me, as I said, but there was one slight, very minor irritation with this desk, and that was the height of the keyboard tray. Now, it's not just this particular desk. In fact, I never really could gel too much with keyboard trays, but I wanted to try it out this time to save some space on my desk and not have my MIDI keyboard on top of my desk. And I installed it, and it's cool, but it just 
always bangs into the top of my knees. So I started looking at a couple of options and eventually stumbled upon furniture risers. They have these risers for all types of furniture, couches, beds, chairs, tables, you name it, they have it. I went with the two inch risers. They have an inch and a half opening and you slip them right onto the desk leg and then you tighten with a bolt. Make sure you measure whatever it is you want to install this on to make sure that it'll actually fit. They have various versions to accommodate the size of furniture that you may need. Adding the extra two inches gave me everything I was looking for. The tray now fits just over my legs in the way that I like it to fit and it's just such a much more comfortable experience. Now, I know what you're thinking. There are alternatives to this, such as adding casters. In fact, that's a very good option, adding lockable casters to a desk, especially a desk that has rack gear, because you're gonna wanna get behind that rack gear from time to time. However, the legs on this desk are only one inch thick, and I was having a hard time finding lockable casters that were strong enough to hold the weight, but could fit within a one inch one inch space, but I actually like these. I feel very confident that it'll hold the weight and it's been working out great for me so far. And I've also moved the desk back and forth a couple of times to do work behind there and it's held up quite well. Coming in at number four are these clamp on lights. I've been using them throughout the studio for the better half of this entire year now. They're clamp on, so they're easy to attach to pretty much any types of furniture that they can clamp onto. It's on a stiff gooseneck, so it's adjustable and also stays put after you adjust it, which is very, very nice. It's got different color temperatures and you can dim the light as well. So if you like a cooler light, you can do that. Or you like something warmer, like I have it right now, that's an option as well. I have one installed underneath my desk where I could clearly see my pedal board. Now that I have a more full enclosed desk, I get less natural light from the room. And so I was having a hard time seeing my pedals and I've been redoing my pedal board. And then the second one is just above my desk here. When I'm not recording videos and my video lights are not on, it gets a little too dark for me. And so having those lights have been really great above my desk so I could see what I'm doing on the desk itself. The only con with these lights is that for whatever reason, um, once you turn them off, they do not remember the last setting that they were on. Not to mention you have to manually turn them back on. What do I mean by that? That means that I have everything connected to my firm and power supply. When I switch it on, everything turns on with the exception of those two lights. And I have to manually turn them on and then adjust them to the temperature that I had before I turned them off. But I deal with it because they're great. The best part about it is I didn't have to buy two separate ones. I bought a two for one special, two of those for 29 bucks. So just under $30. And yeah, I've had them for the better half of this entire year and they've been working out great. And finally, coming in at number five, replacement wheels for your studio chair. Now my studio chair isn't the greatest studio chair, but it has one feature that I love, and that's that I have the ability to raise the arms. And as a guitar player, that's massive, right? I wanna get the arms out of the way so I can easily play guitar. But one of the downfalls to this chair were the wheels. They were really crackly, and especially off of the tile that I have here in the studio, it made a ton of noise. So I invested in these rollerblade style wheels that I heard were very, very quiet. They're heavy duty. I replaced them and amazing. They're super quiet now and it did exactly what I needed them to do. The only con to these wheels is that literally the chair moves so easy, too easy. When I want to just push back a little bit, I end up going way too far and slamming into the wall. Or if I want to come closer to the desk, I run into the desk because they're just so smooth. There's like zero friction. So I guess the con is that they work almost too well, if that makes any sense. But other than that, they're great. Well, that wraps up this list of five gadgets under $30. If you are interested in purchasing any of these gadgets, I've put affiliate links in the description box below. Using those links don't cost you any more money, but they do help the channel out financially when you purchase through them. So please try to use those links if you can. Also leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought about the gadgets that I'm currently using. And let me know if you're using something that I didn't mention that may increase my workflow. I may be missing something that I didn't even know I need. So let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, please do all the things that help this channel grow. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching and until next week.